Hello everyone and welcome to Dynamic Paint and in this one we're going to work on an example a footprint in dirt all right um, so for this one I set up a little um, scene already with a boot and a quick animation nothing fancy right it's just a boot hovering over the floor making some footprints so we can actually just start trying this out if you have your own scene totally fine if you just want to try it out um, we will add this sample file in the description as well um, so you can just play along if you want. So, Dynamic Paint. If you've watched the intro to Dynamic Paint, um, then you know that every system is going to need a canvas and a brush. If you haven't watched that, it will also be linked below. And we need to have a canvas, right? So we got the brush. The brush is the part that's going to leave something on the canvas. In this case, a footprint. And we need to add a canvas that is actually able to display it with that footprint. All right, so let's press Shift A, Mesh Plane, and let's shape this plane as close to the the area of which our movement is going to be as possible. Reason why is because if we're going to add some subdivisions, because we actually want to displace the mesh, which means we need more geometry, more resolution then we are going to add a subdivision surface that's going to subdivide the entire mesh and the closer that mesh is to our object the well the, the better it will be for our performance because we will get away with less subdivisions um, while maintaining the same resolution pretty much so let's shape this so at the start i'm going to go to edit mode and top view numpad 7 i'm going to move this edge gy closer to our shoe there beautiful or actually let's make it a bit in front of the shoe so the first part is not included in the actual displacement but the first footprint right the first step will be and then let's move to the end frame 200 and let's see where it ends there we go gy there then let's shape this around the shoe as well a bit closer like that beautiful and to go back to object mode tab now let's go to the modifier panel it's modifier search subdivision there we go set this to simple and let's set this to six for now we can always up that later um so now we need the canvas we need the brush let's select our canvas first our ground plane press f2 to rename that into ground right beautiful then let's go to the dynamic, um, the physics, I mean, and set this to be dynamic paint. Canvas, add canvas. Beautiful. For our boot, we're going to select dynamic paint as well. Set this to be the brush, add brush. Beautiful. Let's once select our canvas again and set this from paint to displace. There we go. Now the brush collection can be empty, so let's just leave that empty for now and see how this plays along, right? There we go. Nothing happens. Reason why is because it's not interacting with our boot at all. Right, so let's move it up a tiny little bit so we can actually get an imprint there. See it moving. And there we go. You can already see some mesh displacement. Beautiful. Now the resolution is a little bit low. So let's just up this to be, well, perhaps 7. Let's see. We can always up this before the final render, I'd say. I'm going to move this a little bit closer to there. And I'm going to set my subdivisions to eight beautiful all right now our simulation is going to be a little bit slower but we got a nice resolution on that mesh we're even getting some of that um that soul what is it called the bottom part um mesh that's actually going to show a little bit in the footprint as well which is quite nice right mouse shade smooth by angle beautiful okay so that is our starting point Right, so we already have our first system in place. Now the depth in which it is going to imprint just depends on how close you set this mesh to be um, at the, the, the floor, basically. Right, so if I move this more up, this entire part of our shoe is going to be imprinted. Um, so let's just see how that looks, right? We can play this and just figure out the, the best depth for us. I like a nice deep footprint. Maybe that is a little bit much, right? So. Let's move this a little bit lower. There we go. Something like that. Beautiful. So we already have a displacement. Now you may wonder, is that everything a footprint is? Uh, pretty much, right? Pretty much. But we're going to add some other stuff there as well. So first of all, let's go to our render engine and set this to cycles. Set this to GPU as well. And let me just make sure that this is all cleared. Yeah, there we go. 
and let's just go to rendered view. Alright, so we are in cycles, a nice gray background. So let's go to our environment, our world properties, and let's set our color to be an environment texture. I'm going to hit open. And if you don't have any environment textures yet, please go ahead and move over to polyhaven.com. It's a good one. And you can find free HDRIs right there and just download one of them, locate your file. And I'm going to do that right now as well. MHDR. And I got a nice, nice sandy environment, which is called Pizzle Pernus 4K, right? And um, you can find the same one if you want. Um, or pick your own one, right? One that you like. And I want the shading to show this footprint a little bit better. So I'm going to open up a new window, set this to Shader Editor and World. And I'm going to select my HDRI, press Ctrl T. If Ctrl T doesn't work for you, please go to Edit, Preferences, Locate Add-ons, and then search for Node Wrangler and enable it. And then you can press Ctrl T, you will get the texture coordinate and the mapping node, which allows us to rotate the HDRI. Right? Beautiful. So let's do something like, something like this, I guess. So we get a nice shadow on one side of that, that footprint. All right. And then we can move over to step two, right? So I have a Blender kit enabled, which allows me to add some very quick um, textures, right? I'm just going to do that right now to add a little bit of a dirt material real quick. Um, so Blender kits, you can download that as well. Blenderkit.org, I suppose. Um, is it .org? I think it's .com. Blenderkit.com. Uh, quick check. Yes, it is Blenderkit.com. Just download that for free. Add it to your Blender. It in the add-on section as well, like we just did for Node Wrangler, and you can find your dirt material, right? Beautiful, just works very quickly. You can just locate any dirt you'd like. This one looks beautiful. Select it, and it will be added to your object beautifully. All right, so that's a fine starting material. I'm going to locate my render, my film, and set this to be transparent, just because I don't want all that... Uh, cloudiness in the background and then we can actually just replay this let this simulate for a few footprints maybe two there we go number one you can see a nice imprint going on there you can really see it right now but you will be able to see it when we stop the animation and there we go two footprints beautiful in the sand all right so what do we do now by the way if your scene is too contrast or too high exposure Go over to your render tab, to the bottom color management. You can just lower or increase your um, exposure, depending on how you like it to be. And if you would think your ground texture is too small, go to the object shader to the left. We can just increase or decrease the scale, right? So it matches a bit more with the size of our shoe, something like that. Beautiful. All right. Um, we can't really see the footprint yet. Reason why? is because the inner part looks exactly the same as the outer part, right? So I want something going on here that looks a little bit different than it does on the outsides. And the way I'm going to do that is with another canvas system. All right, so let's go back to solid view for a second. And let's go over to our ground object, go to the physics, and we can just add another canvas. Okay, surface 0.001. And we can set this to be paint, right? The first one was displaced. The second one I want paint because I just want a mask that is going to be able to tell me where to switch materials or switch color, whatever. Okay, so looking good, looking good. This arrow at all of this is quite fine. And we can now hit the plus on the output. Remember, we always need to do that to set up that mask. There we go. And let's set the initial color to be black, right? I want the entire mask to be black, except for the imprints on our foot, um, not the imprints on the dirt. Um, so let's select our brush and paint color. Let's set that to be white, F, 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 F. There we go, that is white. So now when we play this, and um, we, we didn't even have to play it, I think, but I think because we did add a new, canvas it has to reload some of the things so let's just replay that 
There we go. Number two, beautiful. So let's go to rendered view. This is our material. We can now hit Shift A and find an attribute node, right? And the attribute we just named was DP Paint Map. We can just Control C that and paste that in here. And if we now Control Shift click on that, we can see how that mask looks, right? So we're getting a mask near the footprints, but it's actually a little bit too big, right? I wanted to start more here and not there at the edge. And the way we can change that is one with a color ramp but if you don't want to use color ramps just yet we can actually go ahead and go to our canvas and we can enable shrink and let's set this to be a speed of two and let's see what that does to our white mask right so it means it's just going to shrink that mask for just a little bit and it's going to end up with a smaller mask pretty much right so you can see right now we have a smaller mask that starts pretty much after that's sinking in, right? And it's just a little bit better, better, I think. So let's play this for another footprint and then we can start doing some beautiful shading. All right, there we go. Now let's go to rendered view. We are there, but we have got the mask as our surface. So let's Ctrl Shift click on our principal BSDF. See how that looks, beautiful. And so now we can actually start doing some magic in here. I'm going to make this all a little bit smaller. There we go. So what I want to do, if we have a footprint on some dirt, and perhaps there's a little bit of a wet dirt a bit deeper into the floor, into the surface, and let's say a little bit of water comes up and makes the ground a little bit darker, it adds some shininess, right? So we can totally set that up. Um, with that mask we just created, the, the, the DP Pay Map. So first of all, what I said was I wanted to change the color a little bit to make it a bit darker. So let's hit Shift A, Mix Color, and drag that in there. And we can connect the color of our mask to be the factor, right? So you can already see what is happening. Now, I don't want the color to be completely um, white, of course. Um, I want some of the texture to, um, to, of course, be in there as well. Um, so I'm just going to connect this to the second socket as well. Hit Shift A and find a hue saturation value node and connect that in between the bottom socket. And then to make this darker, we can just tweak the value, right? Hold Shift and drag this to the left and see what it does to your color of that of that mask, right? It's just going to lower the overall lightness pretty much. And I'm going to set this at like 0.5 perhaps. So it's just a nice bit darker, maybe 0 0.6 though. There we go. And what I also want to do is I want this part to be a bit more glossy, right? I want it to be a little bit more um, looking like it has a little bit of wetness in there. So we can do that by hitting Shift A and finding a mix, converter mix and dragging this in the roughness. So I want my attribute once again to be that factor, right? That's going to define um, between A, the texture roughness, and B, um, a roughness that we set ourselves. So we can connect this color once again to the B and hit Shift A, and we can just find a math node there, set this to multiply. So now the lower we set the multiply value, the glossier this is going to be. If I set this at 0.1, this is going to be way glossier, as you can see. We're getting some glossy values in there. Um, perhaps we need to change our world just a little bit. So it's a bit more glossy. There we go. Right? So this reflects a bit better. Amazing. Um, perhaps this is a little bit too glossy though. So let's go back to our objects and set this to be just a bit more like 0.4 perhaps. Something like that. Actually, it looks quite nice, I would say. Um, Beautiful. And that is already a very nice system that we can play around with. Okay, so let's just play this animation and see how it looks when all the footprints are there. Right, why not? Play this, beautiful. And I think it looks really good. The footprints are too deep, the color is quite nice, I think. Um, so you can imagine that you can do this pretty much with all objects that you want right it doesn't only have to be a boot 
you can imprint this with whatever and on whatever material as well, right? So we can just um, copy this entire middle setup, right? This, this, and this. We can just select everything, press Ctrl C or even Ctrl G, right? Group it up, and we got some input values. Um, A is the texture, so you can open up your right window, go to Group, open this up, right? And we can name A to be our texture. And then the other A, right? This A <laughs> is going to be the input of the attributes. So of the um, paint, yeah, paint mask. Okay. Then the outputs, this is going to be the um, texture update. And this is going to be the glossiness, no, roughness update, right? So if I now leave this group with exit group, right mouse, exit group, you can see we got a nice little node group that defines the paint mask, right? So let's rename this to dynamic paint. Beautiful, make it a little bit bigger. We can even just color this so we can find it easy. I am usually make my stuff pink because it's easy to spot. There we go. Now we have a paint mask that we can use for whatever, right? So I could just add a snow material. Let's try snow. Let's see, do we have a good snow material? I quite like this one. Let's add that there. And, well, there's a little, some I'll run into some footprints there. It's a little bit uh, annoying, but let's just scale everything up to two. There we go. And I'm just going to not have a displacement. There we go, looking a little bit better. And then, let's head back to the start of our animation. Play this up. We're going to have our initial footprint, of course, because we've got a displacement going on on that canvas. But we don't have any of the other elements yet. Right, so what we can do now is because we made that group, there's a little bit of a weirder material to work with, but nothing that we can't tweak. Just make sure that you add that group right before the input values, right? Not before this, for example, not before the mix, but just before it connects to the principal BSDF. So hit Shift A and just find your group. So we named this dynamic paint and we can just add this there. So it's gonna make our texture darker. And now I realize that we actually named this paint mask wrong because it's actually the input of our um, roughness. So let's tweak that, go into the group by pressing tab, open up your group, and let's rename this to be roughness, All right? Exit your group. And then we can connect this roughness, right? This is the roughness input. Hold shift and right mouse. You can drag a little line there which means that we can now connect this there and then connect this output to the roughness, right? So that's going to be a little bit more shiny. Now, perhaps the color is um, a little bit too dark. Snow doesn't change that much, I guess. So we can just up that just a tiny little bit like that, right? So it even looks like a little bit of, of ice showing below that, um, below that snow, right? A layer of ice that's froze and is now visible because the footprint removed or uh, compressed some of that snow, right? So you can do this with any surface, right? Beautiful. So just remember that we have got a nice node group now, right? I'm going to make this pink again. There we go. That we can now use for multiple materials, right? So just try out some different things, whatever look we want. We can now just switch these materials, right? We can switch this from snow back to... Uh, Dirt floor, I think it was, was it? Yes, and remember when you change your material, you'll have to replay your animation as well, okay? Um, because the values will just get lost. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned some new things here on how to combine two dynamic paint systems to create a nice example of um, what you can create with it and also to make it a little bit better with, for example, some paint masks, right? Um, together with your dynamic paint, right? So if you did like this, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We are very happy with all of those. And then we will see you in the next one. Cheers.